With the end of the 2023 Overwatch League season, the future of Overwatch esports does seem incredibly uncertain. That being said, despite what the future might hold, I did want to take some time to talk about some of the incredible players that this league has seen over the years. So I wanted to start off this series with my personal top 10 favorite DPS players. Obviously just a reminder that this list is of course my own personal preference. Starting off strong at number 10 is Choi Sewan. The man is pretty much a Swiss army knife when it comes to flux DPS, being able to play pretty much any hero you could possibly need. It's honestly tragic to me that most western fans weren't able to see him play on LAN. Despite playing in the quote unquote weaker region, Choi has always shown that he has what it takes to be considered a top 5 flex DPS of all times. He didn't even let a mediocre Guangzhou charge team stop him from performing well, and in whatever form Overwatch Esports takes, I truly hope Choi is able to find success. Up next at number 9, we have Hisu. Hisu is one of those players who has always performed consistently well, but unfortunately were always on struggling teams. And when he wasn't on a struggling team, such as the 2020 Philadelphia Fusion, he was benched in favor of Carpe or one of the other Philly DPS players. It's honestly really unfortunate that he decided to sign with Shanghai of all teams this season, especially when it was rumored that the Shock were actually looking to pick him up. Whether or not that's true, I'm not 100% sure, but still. He is a player that makes you wonder what could have been if he got signed to, like, you know, an actual good team. Coming up at number 8, we have another hit scan goat, Birdring. With the exception of the 2022 season where he didn't play, Birdring has always performed insanely well throughout the entirety of his time in the league, and has always been capable of clutching out fights when his team needed him to do that the most. When you combine his skill with his longevity of career, it's pretty easy to see why he's been a fan favorite for as long as he's been playing. And if there was an Overwatch League Mount Rushmore, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people would want him on it. Continuing on with another hitscan player, at number 7 we have Shy, and it's pretty easy to see why he is considered to be one of, if not the best, hitscan player in the world. He first joined the league in 2020, and despite being part of a, let's be honest, pretty lackluster Hangzhou Spark for the first two years, in 2022, he really came into his own as an outstanding player, and is a reason why you shouldn't always factor in where a team finishes at the end of the season to determine whether or not a player is good or not. Despite seeing a bit of a falloff near the end of his Overwatch career, number 6 is definitely going to go to Carpe. There are too many people who seem to forget how insane he was during the first few seasons of the Overwatch League, and honestly even up until the end of 2021. We really can't forget any of the insane amount of highlights he's given us over the years, especially that match against Boston which is being shown right now, where him and EQO completely turned around the fight in favor of the Philadelphia Fusion, winning them the map. Carpe is honestly a great example of why you shouldn't discount everything a player has done in their career just because they struggled during their last season in the league. Continuing with another player who played in APAC, number 5 is the Hyperflex DPS player himself, Leave. And I mean, come on, do I even need to say more about this guy? He's pretty much single-handedly carried a struggling Chengdu Hunters for multiple seasons, and he fit in perfectly alongside Shy this past season, helping carry Hangzhou to a third place finish. And he is a great example of a player who, even if they're on a struggling team, somehow finds a way to showcase just how naturally talented they are. He might have had a somewhat lackluster 2022, and let's not talk about 2023, but number 4 is Flutta. Similar to Carpe, despite what people might currently think of him, he was in fact one of the best flex DPS players of all time, with a very impressive career to show for it. And who could forget how hard he tried to carry and deadlift his Apex team, coining the term Flutta Deadlift. Speaking of Flutta, number 3 is his former Shanghai Dragons DPS duo, Lip. If Shy is the best hitscan in the world, Lip is definitely a close second. Even when Shanghai was struggling in 2022, Lip constantly popped off and tried his hardest to deadlift his team. Not to mention how in 2023 he was still by far the best Sombra in the world. And I truly hope we get to see him play her with the new rework that comes out tomorrow. And in the top two, we are starting off with the DPS GOAT himself, Prophet. Where do I start with this guy? He has been playing for an insanely long time, first of all, dating all the way back to GC Busan in 2017. And through all of these years, he has always performed consistently well. He might not still be at his absolute peak, but he's still a top DPS player in the league. Who could forget that lower bracket match against Shanghai last year during the kickoff clash? And do we even need to bring up the fact that he won the first ever Overwatch League Grand Finals? Before we get to number 1, I wanted to at least mention Pelican, Merit, and Kevster, who I somehow managed to forget about during the creation of this video. From Cubster carrying the Gladiators to Pelican being a solid flex DPS for Houston, 
all the way to merit winning grand finals MVP, all three of them are truly great players who definitely deserve an insane amount of respect from Overwatch League fans. Last but certainly not least is Proper, and similar to Leave, what can I say about him? The dude is a menace on literally everything he plays. Despite the shock struggling this season, and even for a little bit last season, Proper has always played insanely well and has always tried to deadlift his team to victory even when faced with ridiculously bad odds. With the future of Overwatch Esports uncertain, we need to make sure that while we might not know what comes next, we still take the time to celebrate all of the good of the last six years, which is something I plan on doing by creating top tens of my favorite tank and support players. I'm not really sure what type of videos I'll make after those ones come out, but I'm very thankful to have you all along for the ride. Just a reminder, I do stream very regularly. I stream a variety of content, a lot of Dead by Daylight, a lot of horror games, so come hang out for a while if you can.